All right, before I get into anything, let me just say that first and foremost, I love my Apollo Ghost. I have ridden it over 3,000 miles so far, but there are some days that are more fun than others, and this is not one of those days. Long story short, I got an EE06 troubleshoot code, which has to do with the battery, and so I figured it'd be good to kind of go through the troubleshooting process to understand where I think of things as an electrician. So, gonna take the cover off first and foremost. And let me just say they pack this stuff in here tight. Here we've got a bird's nest of a harness. And taking the cover off, I can already smell something which is an indicator that something has burned. So, I'm gonna be checking the leads, make sure that there's no shorts. And I'm gonna be checking the battery as well because the battery is the code, the error code that I got. So we'll get this out of here. You'll notice that my wiring harness for the lights isn't in here, or my module for the lights, because I already took that one out, and that one's another, another story. I guess I can tell you while I'm undoing things, but I absolutely love this. I ride my scooter rain or shine, right? And that's kind of a necessity since I live in the Pacific Northwest. There's rain and I gotta get to work. And so in doing so, I found that the battery and the controllers for this scooter are awesome. They are great. I mean, they have their IP66 rating. They're fantastic. But the module for the lights it could have been designed better. And if you have the Mach 1 upgrade, which I don't, unfortunately. Paulo, you want to hook me up? Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, if you have that upgrade, then you don't need the LED light module. But it was a very poor design, and really that's the only bad design that I've found. Uh, there's a lot of people that are kind of critical of the fenders on these things but I made my own rear fender and that was a fun project anyways but that one I ended up getting a replacement for like 20 bucks and I haven't put it in yet because I was just waiting for something to go wrong well I guess I wasn't waiting for something to go wrong it was just waiting for the time that it would take to get into this but really it doesn't take too long to take this stuff apart and I've built an intimate relationship with the ghost. Not saying that things are going wrong all the time, but the thing you need to understand as a scooter owner is we don't, if you go into this thinking you're never going to have to fix anything, thinking that you'll never have to send it in if you don't want to fix something, uh, thinking that it's just going to be an absolute breeze the whole way. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're kind of just setting yourself up for failure. You're lying to yourself. Because with anything, there's going to be maintenance. There's going to be costs involved. Things are going to break. That's just part of it. Some people are more unlucky. They have the misfortune of having to fix a lot of stuff and other people are fortunate in that things last for a long time without needing any real heavy duty maintenance and good for those people but i'm not saying be pessimistic about it i'm just saying that be prepared you know things are going to happen that's just part of life and electric scooters are no different whether you have like an Apollo Go, or if you're riding around on an Apollo Pro. Just keep in mind, you're going to have to fix things. Okay, I'm going to stop talking and just get this thing off real quick. <sighs> Apollo, if you're listening, I hate the machine screws on this thing. Just food for thought. Okay, on to the bird's nest, rat's nest, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're taking the battery out, keep in mind that there's a lot of weight in the battery. So, 
spread out your stands, whatever you're doing to support this so that it doesn't go toppling over. So I took off this front cover so that I can access some stuff over here because like I said, things are really tight in here, but there'll be various connectors that you will need to undo if you are trying to get in here. So like over here, these are the battery charging port connectors. So undo those and now I should be able to pop the main battery connector right here and here. And I'll see what's going on. Ugh. Just whenever you're doing something like, something like this, you got to be mindful of where you're pulling your cables. You don't want to strip anything out as you're pulling it because then you're just going to run into more issues. But honestly, Apollo has these all built pretty robust. And so it's not a major issue. But if you're careless, it will become an issue for you. Okay, so... First and foremost, looking at my battery, I think there's something pretty obvious. I got a burnt fuse. So, makes sense why I was going into low power mode. I will need to, unfortunately, get myself. Yeah, that melted itself to the case. Lovely. Yeah, that'll be a fun one to try and get off. So this boot right here, it is self-adhered now to what I have going on in here. So I guess my uh, troubleshooting is not so in-depth as I, <laughs> I thought it would be. Um, I am pulling back this blue tape right here just to make sure that it wasn't the battery itself that uh, was penetrated. The battery is in good standing. It really is just that fuse there that now is finally free. So the fun part is now I will have to get a new fuse. I will have to get a new fuse holder and I'll have to do some new wiring to put everything in there. Understand if you work on it yourself that warranties kind of go out the window, but this has been out of warranty for a while and I put 3,000 miles on it. So it's taken a beating. In my mind, this isn't a big issue. This is just regular maintenance. But you guys want to see the guts of this thing? I think it's kind of cool. So here we see inside my scooter. Like I said, I ride in the rain. So water is just an unnecessary evil. If you want to avoid water in here, don't ride in the rain. Simple as that. Well, it's safe to say that I'm not going to be able to reuse this, so I'm going to go down to the auto parts store, grab a new fuse holder and a fuse, and then I'll put it back together, not in this video, but in another one. So let's say I didn't find the issue on the battery, like right off the bat. Um, my next step would be to actually go through all this wiring, see if there's any shorts to a, the controller, because it's possible it would be putting out a false code. Um, I would also go up this stem and check out the actual uh, little display unit for the controller, see if there's a loose wire on there. Um, those are some of the things that you, like the display wire, that's something you would want to check first because that is one of the easier things to do. I had a pretty good idea that there was an issue with the battery, so that's why I want to come straight to the battery. Um, if that was not the issue then like I said I'd go through all the wiring check everything out see if there was anything out of the ordinary if I couldn't find anything obvious then I would break out my multimeter and if you don't know what a multimeter is sorry um, this is a multimeter it's just an electrical test tool so then I would use that and I would go between different points and see how my connections were I put this together just because I want you to know that working on your own scooter, it's totally doable. 
I totally understand if you just want to give it to a shop and have them do it, but there may be a time where you're out of warranty and you want to fix things yourself because it's a lot more budget friendly to fix things yourself. And if you have the know-how or you're willing to learn, this is something you can totally tackle. So I urge those of you who have worked on your own scooters um, to help people out in the comments that they have their own questions because we're a community here. We want to help each other out and I'll answer questions if you guys have any, but overall, riding a scooter, it's a lot of fun, and it may give you headaches at times, but that's just part of the process. This is just a minor setback. I'll be back out on the road in no time once I do that little fix. Don't be intimidated by working on your own stuff. You absolutely can do it, and we've got a huge community here that's ready to help.